I don't know what river this is, but down there, they've got some airboats going on. Boy, that's green, isn't it? And this is the other side of the highway. This is Highway 90, just west of Del Rio. Looks like there used to be something right there. Let's go see what Judge Roy Bean has to show us. Justice of the Peace Law West of the Pecos. So this was the Jersey Lily Saloon and Judge Roy Bean's headquarters or whatever. Anyway, so this place is like really small. The Jersey Lily Saloon was from 1882 to 1903. Law West of the Pecos courtroom named for Judge Roy Bean's idol actress, Lily Langtree. So Langtree is the little town we're in, too. So this was the saloon and the courthouse. Not much to it. It's about as big as some of these new house saloons. I mean, not saloons. Um, living rooms. So we're now in the original Jersey Lily Saloon, the exact site in this very building. Judge Roy Bean dispensed liquor and harsh justice, all part of his law west of the Pecos. How cool, huh? And there's Miss Lily. And then over here is the pool table, or what used to be the pool table. There's the legs. Three of the four legs of what's left of the pool table are the billiard hall. This was Judge Roy Bean and his visitors played for fun and profit. The judge died in this room, March 16th, 1903. He was buried in Del Rio. Boxing started becoming popular during his time, too. And he had a pet bear. I think his name is Bruno. Yeah, Bruno. Judge Bean's pet bear, Bruno. 
It's the building we're standing in. Now his house apparently is up the hill behind this building. I'm not going to walk up that hill. It's just too dang hot. So this one is Miss Virginia Chavez. That's who he married, but he had affairs with Miss Miss Lily. Miss Lily Langtree. And there's him and his kids. His kids are Zula Mae, Roy Jr., Sam, and Laura. There's Judge Roy Bean. Ah, just so dig history. So I wanted to tell you a little bit, I found out about Judge Roy Bean. Um, and I wish I was so interested in history back in high school, but you know, now I love it. Back then I hated it. I think I barely passed, <laughs> but anyway, um, he was born in 1825 in Kentucky, Mason County, Kentucky. So he had a brother named Sam. I'm not sure if that's his only sibling or not, but anyway, by his early teens, he went to him and Sam went on a mule freighting train down to Chihuahua, Mexico. And they opened a saloon. This is like the short version. They opened a saloon. Um, uh, Judge Bean got into a scuffle over a senorita and some, her, her honey, tried to run him over. So Sam killed him. So they had to flee Mexico. <laughs> So they come up through Southern Texas, or what's now Southern Texas, and um, somehow they split. I didn't get in, I didn't read as far as to see how they, they parted ways, but um, Bean made it, made his way over to San Diego where he opened a rather large saloon, uh, got in some more trouble with some senoritas, you know, Bean and the women, I guess, and made his way to Texas. Now, there's a bunch of stuff that happened in between there, but this is like the short version. So, Lily Langtree was an actress, and Judge Bean was obsessed with her. So, he settled in what's now Langtree, Texas, which is just west of Del Rio, down way, way, way close to the border of Texas, the Texas-Mexico border. So, he opened up the little saloon near the railroad, so the Southern Pacific railroad was right there in did a water stop in Langtree so Bean opened a saloon the Jersey Lily and after Lily Langtree <laughs> um, created the town Langtree and so the Southern Pacific Railroad would come in for a water stop and all these thirsty travelers would come into his saloon for a beer for a cold beer well Bean only had ice in the winter months. So in the summer, a traveler would say, you know, why is he getting air-cooled beer, which is, you know, in July in Texas, it's kind of hot. Um, Bean, would, Bean would say, like, where are you from? And he'd say New York. And he says, you know, whoever heard of ice in July in Texas or something, something like that. Anyway, um, I messed up that story, but that's okay. There's more. <laughs> so what he would do, and this is how he got to be called the grandfather of all cod men. He would, um, the travelers would be at the bar. He would serve them their beer. They would put their money on the bar and he would just kind of fiddle and fumble around until he heard the train whistle blow for the travelers to, you know, load back up. And so the train whistle would blow. The travelers are all, you know, I want my change, I want my change. So he... He fumbles around like a slow old man or something and grabs the money, turns his back to the travelers, and he had a cigar box as a register. So he would fumble around with a cigar box, you know, stalling. The train whistle would blow again. And then he would turn around with money in his hand to give them change, and he would drop it. So he would go down to the floor behind the bar. Where the hell's that money, you know? <laughs> And the the train whistle would the train would start moving, so the travel travelers would have to run back to the train to hop on, so they didn't miss their train, and leave their change. 
So that's who thought of that. That's what happens. He so the godfather of con men. So that's yeah, that's it. So anyway, I'm gonna look up some more on Judge Bean and because it's just interesting. And there have been a couple of movies about Judge Bean. I'll probably look those up and download them because you know I love movies. And that's it. So I spent a couple of hours at the museum and then made it to my next destination where I am now sitting here parked. So y'all check out my website, rvchillin.com. And, you know, there it is. See you later. Ciao, babies.